Welcome to the penultimate episode on creating a sword for the Chronoblade game by Enway. This episode is going to be all about filing and fitting, but let's look at redoing the guard that I messed up last time. John West from Celtic Ironworks is giving me a hand with bending the guard around a tube to get a perfect semicircle. Scrolling tongs and a hammer help to improve the overall shape. Instead of using traditional blacksmithing methods to create the slot for the tang, we solicit the help of a mill to create the initial slot. This is clearly a much more controlled operation, but I will still have to do a lot of filing for the final fit, as you will see. The next step is creating a transition in the guard so that the wider blade can rest in it. I frequently check how close I have come by seeing how well the blade slides into it. After the lower guard is fitting, it's the turn of the upper guard to receive some quality time with files. I'm using a throwaway hilt from a previous project to check how everything is coming together. Here is a little trick for getting a perfect fit. I'm using Machinist Blue to coat the tang so that I can find the high spots on the upper guard. Once both of the guards fit, it's time to fit the pommel. Originally I had drilled a small pilot hole that I had drifted. This resulted in a slot that was not quite centered. I'm going to fix that now. All right. That's close enough, and brute force is going to fix the rest. While the guards are all fitted, they don't have a tapered profile yet. Here I'm using a flexible rule to draw the shape I desire. The bandsaw is going to remove most of the excess material, and the fine tuning is going to happen on the belt center. I'm using a small platform that the guard can rest on while creating a smooth transition. The next step is to make the wooden core for the hilt. I'm drawing the center and then will drill all the way through. It turns out that the lathe is an excellent tool for that too. Although difficult to see, I am drilling another two holes left and right from the center, where the wider part of the tang is going to be. Now comes the fun part. I am heating the tang of the sword to such a temperature that it will burn right through all the wood, with a lot of smoke too. This is a traditional method that was likely used a thousand years ago too. As promised earlier, it's back to the belt grinder, this time to really create the final shape of the guards. As you can probably tell when making swords, the belt sunder is the tool that you'll spend the most time with. However, as an intermission, let's go back to the hilt and get closer to its final shape too. I'm drawing the lines that I will cut away on the bandsaw. It's going to make everything significantly thinner.
While the bandsaw removes a lot of wood, sandpaper will get us the rest of the way. As with the guard, the hilt needs to fit well too. And Machinist Blue is our friend again. I use the slack belt to gently round the corners of the guards. The end result is very pleasing. Since I had forged the tang extra long and the tang has intentionally not be hardened, I can simply cut away the excess. Hand sanding the hilt is the last step before accomplishing a major milestone in the project. Now everything fits together and the sword is much closer to being finished. This is a good time to finish up with this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up and a subscription to my channel. Expect the final episode soon. See you next time.